Hey Soledad, welcome to another edition of the Penrose Coaching Minute. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of student engagement. Let's go. In our coaching newsletter, you're going to find an activity to help you get thinking about strategies we can use in a distance learning classroom. Adapted from the Distance Learning Playbook by Fisher, Fry & Hattie, Carrie and I would like to have you take a moment and think about your face-to-face -face classroom engagement strategies. List them and then write their distance learning counterparts in the adjacent box. Pause the video and take a moment to complete this. When you restart the video, we're going to talk about a strategy to engage in group work. Welcome back. Let's take group work from a face-to-face -face environment and move it into Zoom. What first comes to mind? Well, there are multiple solutions, but let's talk about breakout rooms. Now, depending on who you talk with, breakout rooms can be a touchy subject in teaching. Before you completely write them off, know that there are teachers successfully using breakout rooms at all levels within our district. Here are some of the strategies that are making breakout rooms successful with teachers that I talk to. Number one, use group roles. Just like in the physical classroom, give each student a job to perform. One suggestion is to develop breakout room leaders. Find time to meet with a group of students during office hours or before school who become your room leaders. Instruct them on facilitation techniques and talk with them about the procedures for contacting you if there's an issue. The ask for help icon sends a message to the host to visit the breakout room and no one in the room will know who sent it. Number two, set a time limit. One teacher suggests about 10 minutes. Any more time than that and students may get distracted. If needed, break up your lesson into chunks. Return as a whole class to check for understanding and then head back into the breakout rooms. Rooms stay unless you change them. So they will be exactly the same group each time you send them there. Additionally, be careful not to set too short a time period for them in the rooms. There is a delay as students are put into breakout rooms as they get their bearings and introduce themselves to students they may not have interacted with before. Number three. Make sure students clearly know the task. Post instructions in Nearpod, Pear Deck, Google Slides, Classroom, Seesaw, so make sure that they can access the task while they're in their room. Before you send them into a room, you can have them check for understanding by having a student restate the instructions before sending them off. Use the broadcast message function to send reminders during that time. Number four, have students produce a product. Each group should have something to share when they return. Number five, if you visit a group, consider doing so with your camera off. According to Doug Fisher, it is surprisingly less intimidating to students when you join a group in progress with that camera off. Finally, to address the primary concern teachers have with breakout rooms, let's consider supervision. Now, Imagine yourself back in your physical classroom. You're working with a group of four students on one end of the classroom. Could you always hear what was going on on the other side of the room? And how did you find out when something was amiss? Remember, we were never able to monitor every student at every moment. And if you have a group that needs a little additional supervision, you can always leave them in the main room to work with you. We hope you enjoyed this video. Join Carrie and me on Mondays from 1 to 2. You can find our Zoom link in the coaching newsletter. Stay safe. Bye-bye.